it's worth just making a quick mention to affiliate about affiliate networks now because they're also a really valuable source of information when it comes to sort of an idea. Um, affiliate networks are it's an advertising network for people who don't know that um, allows a publisher or someone who runs a website to earn a commission for while working on behalf of another company. So um, a really good example of that is uh, MoneySavingExpert.com. Anyone heard of that site to get credit for anything? Um, he provides really great impartial information on a range of subjects, but what he less people are aware of is that if you apply for a credit card through his website, he's going to get a kickback. Um, Martin Lewis is brilliant. He has pulled the wool over so many people's eyes and he, they, they, they know it's a benevolent service and he is very truthful in what he does, but he also makes probably about £5 million a year from that site. So he's doing well out of it, um, don't forget. And the, that's all facilitated via an affiliate network. They make the connection between the two sites and they, um, they give the person the commission. And if you're working in an area like personal finance, like he is, the potential money that you can earn from helping people um, sell a financial product is, is much bigger than helping someone sell, sell a pair of jeans. Um, but that said, there is a really diverse range of people who are looking to get a uh, commission from other sites. Mm -hmm. And why that's important is because while it obviously shows you a way that you could maybe monetize an idea, if you've got a great idea for a music site or a great idea for a, um, I don't know, a, a fashion say you can see that you can make money from the, the links that you're putting up. It's also interesting because it shows you what other your competitors or what other people are willing to pay <coughs> for um, a lead. So for example you want to sell some flowers online, I don't know why I keep talking about flowers. Mm -hmm. um, you want to sell some flowers online, you see that Interflora is willing to say pay 2% value of the, the basket that someone buys to a publisher who helps them sell that basket. And that gives you an indication of sort of you know, the margins that they're working to. Travel, for example, really low margins. People don't pay a lot to uh, book a flight because flights don't cost as much as they used to. Um, but again, public uh, consumer finance, something like that, loads of money. You can talk about 50, 60 pounds to get someone signed up to an insurance policy. So you've got a big website, you do well. So it's just something to maybe look at quickly. If you know of a competitor, do a quick search online. Do they have an affiliate program? The information will be out there publicly. Um, because lots of people are sending sort of tips and stuff like that, um, and you'll be able to see the percentage that they're willing to offer to people if they help them sell something. And um, Amazon actually ran the first ever affiliate program. It's one of the things that they did that I think a lot of people realise. And um, they set up actually through their own website. They don't use a network. The ability for people to become what they call a, a partner, I think. Um, uh, basically, you can help them sell a book or a CD, and they're willing to give you some money back for it. Um, so as I say, yeah, find out what your competitors or or people who are working in maybe the space that you're interested in, find out what they're willing to pay. It's a really valuable um, tool. Um, okay, so that brings us on to one of our first projects, um, which was a website called wheelonlocal.com. Um, I don't necessarily expect anyone to have heard of it. It didn't really get that big. Um, but what we looked at was, in the first way search, we saw that there was an increasing demand for really what we call hyper-local content. So the idea that we want the, the corner shop around the corner, we want to know when it's open, we want to know when what he sells, things like that. Um, now, often these searches were coming up blank because people like Yale.com hadn't really pushed their business forward that much. So we saw an opportunity there to create a small uh, presence for lots of small businesses. And furthermore, we thought that people would be willing to share experiences, obviously the trends in user-generated content and social networking, that was about three years ago, four years ago, were sort of really at their height. And we thought people would be willing to share experiences that they had online while um, reviewing a local business. In turn, the business gets uh, involved and you know, there's potentially a, a sort of a classified business directory type um, model that we were working towards. Um, we also saw, um, as I said at the bottom, that the Americans were already getting into it. Um, and we also saw an industry that hadn't really you know, evolved much. Yellow Pages is still as basic as it was. It's only in the last real sort of year that they've sort of started to like, push their website. Um, and also there was a value in, in search, therefore. Um, you know, people were searching for these things. If we could get a, a page listed on Google that had good content that showed them something, plus obviously all the other things on, along around it, like the community that we wanted to develop and things like that, we thought we had a really great idea. Um, we only ran the project for nine months because um, we ended up selling it to, um, to Global Media, which is the big radio group. Um, they, uh, were bought, well, it was actually GCAP at the time, and then it got bought by Global, and it was a big sort of commercial radio producer. I think they did BRB. Um, 
and uh, they were looking to basically expand their tool suite of offerings that they had for local business as well, obviously that big gradient network. So we think we sort of captured quite a good moment there. Didn't run the project for that long, but it, you see it as successful nevertheless. Um, five minutes, yeah. Um, <laughs> latest project, the website called Vouchcos.co.uk, much more successful in the terms of its user sort of uptake. Um, the things we spotted um, through reading and just our knowledge of sort of Mark, uh, the, the, uh, the sort of like consumer online space, you know, uh, e-commerce space. Uh, we saw that increasingly companies, both online and offline actually, were using sort of vouchers or little mechanisms for redemption, um, a way to encourage sales essentially. Um, we also saw therefore that people were searching more for these things and um, we wanted to create a site in the space. We actually weren't the first in the space, we were probably the second, maybe the third, depends how you see it, but um, we definitely think we're the best in the market. Um, we also caused the credit crunch, um, which helps us out a lot. Um, obviously, there's always a part of luck involved when you have an idea. Um, you know, we, we didn't know that when we started the project, which was about 18 months ago, that we were going to hit into one of the worst economic recessions of time. But this is how often sites work. Um, Flickr really benefited, benefited for the, from the increase in sales of digital cameras. YouTube benefited from the increase in sales of video cameras. There's projects that well, there's lots of examples of sites that were able to benefit from you know, a tipping point of some you know, uh, consumer product idea, and they were there at the right place at the right time, and we definitely think that was the case with this project. Um, this is an example of a Google Trends graph. Um, so what you can see here is searches for vouchers and the red line voucher codes over the last uh, five years. Um, what you're seeing here is just an upward trend, and obviously we didn't we didn't know that it was going to go like that, but we definitely saw that it was on the up. Also, trends really cleverly will be able to pick out key points. So obviously, this is Christmas. So you can see the growth that you can see at Christmas. And this is this year. And hopefully, obviously, we're hoping to be somewhere around here. <laughs> um, so trends is a great way to see um, what's getting a lot of searches and also when they're getting searched. It's really valuable. Um, a clever way to get an idea of the volume of searches is to put in a term that you know is going to be big. So uh, we always use Britney Spears. Put Britney Spears in against voucher codes. Britney Spears is like here somewhere. The voucher codes is down there. But it gives you a good estimation. They don't obviously provide you with accurate numbers. It's, a, it's an index. So if you put in a big value and a small value, you're going to be able to get an idea of the sort of differences between the two. Uh, but yeah, it's a great, great tool for anything. And it's just really interesting. Um, last few points. Um, there's a thing in web development called Agile. Um, it's a really complicated sort of web development methodology, which I don't even know in the ins and outs of myself. Um, but some of the core principles of it are around sort of fast-paced simplicity. Um, the idea that um, you can have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ideas, uh, particularly when you get on, latch onto one thing that really interests you. Um, you know, the temptation to write a million and one things onto a whiteboard and you know, think, yeah, I'm going to do this and this and this. Definitely what we did, what I did at university, why I started making podcasts or something, God knows the reason. Um, and the Agile will teach, well, to an extent, teaches you to just sort of temper that slightly. Um, you know, be, be reductive, work out why it was that you had the idea in the first place and get it back down to that rather than trying to create a million and one things from this end. With all, by all means, have a plan to get to the end, but. Agile development says, you know, release, some, release a new project quickly and often um, and always be um, taking feedback from people as you do that. And I think whichever business you're involved in, I, I think that's a really valuable uh, piece of advice. Um, last thoughts, and these are just things that I think you're probably all doing already, so I'll, I'll, I'll spread over them. Read obsessively, don't stop ever reading about what it is that you're interested in. Um, there's so much content being produced out there, it's, it's mind-boggling. Um, Meet with lots of people, meet with companies. Um, that people are more willing to talk to you about what it is that they do than you'd be expect. I'm here now, and you can ring up competitors and you know ask them if they want to go for dinner, and, and you'd be surprised how many people agree to do it. Um, and, and write about what you're doing, which I'm sure you're all doing as it is, and get people to tell you what you're doing wrong, because that way you'll uh, you'll make something that people actually want. And that's it.